Now, the former talk show host Wendy Williams has been diagnosed with aphasia and frontotemporal dementia at just 59 years old. Now, this is the same condition that may sound familiar to you because it was made well known by Bruce Willis. And now with two celebrities going public about this condition, I want to bring in speech language pathologist for the Houston Aphasia Recovery Center, Jackie Freer. Good morning, Jackie. Good morning. You know, people keep hearing the dementia, <clears throat> excuse me, the dementia part of this diagnosis with the aphasia, and then they assume that Wendy Williams has lost her memory. But is this the same as memory loss, like with Alzheimer's? No, it's a little bit different. So um, it's the frontotemporal part of the brain degeneration versus um, Alzheimer's dementia, which is a regeneration of the hippocampus. And so it's just a different part of the brain and our language center is actually held on the left side of our brain. Mm -hmm. So what, what exactly causes this? I mean, is it mostly injury, stroke, things like that that would damage that part of the brain? Um, so primary progressive aphasia specifically um, isn't caused by a specific injury, it's um, degenerative. So like someone might lose their train of thought when they're, in a, when they're communicating with a partner or um, they're like, hmm, I can't write this word anymore, and it's more gradual. Whereas aphasia, um, the most common form of aphasia is caused by a stroke, but primary progressive aphasia is more gradual. But, but mostly we're just talking about a loss of language. People don't have the yeah. words that they always right. used to have. It's in here, but they cannot get it out. Yeah, and so elaborate on that a little bit more because we're showing video of when I visited in 2022, which is why we're all wearing COVID masks at the time. But we talked about this being like a puzzle and you know, like all your puzzle pieces aren't where they used to be. So it's just hard, even though somebody still has their, their intellect and they're still very smart people, they just can't reach for those words that used to just come really easily, right? Right. Yeah, so exactly, the puzzle pieces are exactly, or a filing cabinet that gets dumped over. Um, and after someone has a stroke and has aphasia, the, the goal is to put these pieces back together. Um, primary progressive is a little bit different, so they lose language over time, but like you said, they, they still know what they wanna say. And so the goal for them is really teaching them strategies to help them compensate for what they've lost over time. Um, versus aphasia caused by a stroke and we're recovering. The goal for PPA is to remain the same. Mm -hmm. Who do you mainly see this affecting? Like who, who do you mostly, what are the most typical patients that come into the Houston Aphasia Recovery Center? Oh, that, um, so primary progressive aphasia specifically, um, the diagnosis is generally between 50 to 65. Um, and so people with PPA, that's typically what we see. Um, but aphasia caused by a stroke or brain injury, our age range is from 18 to 95. Wow. Um, but PPA more specifically is 50 to 65 is what we're seeing. What would it, what would it affect somebody as young as 18? And, and would that go misdiagnosed if somebody was so young that you would assume something like this wasn't, wasn't, couldn't possibly be what's happening to them? Right, so aphasia caused by a stroke um, could happen at age 18 or a head injury, a car accident or something like that. Whereas the primary progressive aphasia side of it does happen at age 50, 50 and above. Wow. Can you recover from this? Um, aphasia caused by a stroke, recovery is pretty good. Um, a primary progressive aphasia, it's degenerative and so we don't really call it recovery. We call it more like learning to live with primary progressive aphasia um, and learning new ways on how to communicate, whether it be writing instead of talking, um, those kind of things. So learning how to compensate and live with the progression. Learning maybe a new type of communication for you. And I mean, with somebody like Bruce Willis and Wendy Williams, you know, when we're talking about celebrities and we assume they could access the best care available to them, I mean, will they be able to make a recovery? Will they be able to have communication back someday? Um, no, because it's um, a degenerative disease, like I said, the goal is more of a plateau versus a recovery. Mm -hmm. um, aphasia caused by a stroke is sudden, and the goal is we go up and we improve. 
But as, as far as Bruce Willis and Wendy Williams um, diagnosis, um, they will see more deficits over time. And so it's more um, educating the family on how to support them and they will lose the ability to speak more and more over time to where they may not have the ability to talk verbally at all towards the end. Mm -hmm. What do you want people to know about HARC? You guys are available right here in Houston for people uh, suffering with this condition. What would you like people to know? Yeah, HARC is here um, for people with all different types of aphasia. There's, there's lots of different types. And so we provide a very safe environment for people with aphasia. So the thing about aphasia is because when you lose your communication, you lose your confidence, it can become socially isolating. And so HARC is a safe environment where people can come and feel comfortable talking and communicating and whatever that might be. And so they can take it to the grocery store or order a coffee um, and feel confident. So we practice here in a safe environment, take it to the outside. Um, and as far as primary progressive aphasia goes, we're here um, to educate the families on what might be to come and also for people with PPA to come and find camaraderie and people who are going through the same thing as they are. Yeah, and I'm sure that's very helpful and comforting to them. Jackie Freer, thank you for joining me this morning, getting up early and doing this live interview. We appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. All right, I'll be back with uh, uh, to Hark someday and get more information from you. We, we appreciate what you do here.